Good morning, guys. Uh, today we are going to talk about the new APA Gen 3 Little Bastard Muzzle Brake. Um, this is a product that I picked up um, because I've been ecstatic with my Gen 2, but just like a lot of other people, one of the things that I thought it could have been missing was top ports to help us keep our muzzle a little bit more onto the center of the target. They have fixed that with the Generation 3 muzzle brake. They now have the uh, URP, which is basically a top port tuning system to help keep the rifle on target based upon how you as the user are putting pressures on the stock when you shoot. So it's gonna be a really cool product that I picked this up once again for long range shooting and uh, not necessary for competitions, but being able to spot your hits or misses is a massive advantage um, in competition. So something like this, any any muzzle break, but something like this would help greatly um, for your competitions. Uh, I picked this product up at uh, Short Action Precision for $195. Um, it's a little bit more expensive than the Gen 2, but they added an extra port and they added the um, an extra side port and then they added the top port uh, tuning system to it so it's it's I think it justifies the raise and rise in cost for the advantages to the muzzle brake but without further ado let's go ahead and get into what we get into in the package so you have this beautiful box here uh, it's got some gold embossing on it um, super nice so we'll slide it open um, got a sticker it's kind of a cool throwback looking sticker kind of reminds me of a firebird logo and then we have a, a card that just kind of gives some uh, gives some specs. And then on the back, it also um, gives you like a little uh, manual on how to tune the gas system to get it to do what you want. So we'll set that aside. And then super good padding in here. Uh, I don't think there's any way that you're going to hurt this muzzle brake in travel. So we'll pull the muzzle brake out and you can see. Muzzle brake's got four ports, and then here is the tuning system on the top, those eight little holes. That's what we're going to use to tune this thing. So we'll set it right here, and then the only other thing in the package is a little bag. I don't know if you can see that very well, but little bag. It's got some, an Allen key, some Loctite, and a bunch of little um, Allen uh, screws in there that go in your tuning ports. Okay, so if you need some spare foam for anything, there's a ton in this box. That's kind of cool, we'll set that off the frame. So I got the black nitride, they make this in black and stainless steel um, version in uh, 6.5 millimeters for my 260 Remington. Um, the brakes themselves are pretty easy. The ports are a proprietary design for APA. They design the shape of these ports and they work incredibly well. Um, like I said, I've been running the Gen 2 on my rifle for years now and it's been a top-notch product. So you have your, you have an adjustable jam nut right here that you can run in and out in order to self-time your brake to where you don't have to send it to a gunsmith as long as your barrel is threaded. Um, this is a 5 8 by 24 um, thread pitch. So this is gonna match my barrel. Um, <clears throat> there's not really a whole lot to say about the brakes themselves. I mean, I've pretty much showed you all the little features. So what I wanna do is I'll show you how easy it is to take your old brake off and or just put a new one on if you just have a threaded barrel with a cap on it. Um, we'll go through that process and then I'm actually gonna take you guys out to the range and go through my process to tune this to get it to stay as close onto target as I can um, and about how long it takes, how many rounds I spend to do it and kind of so on and so forth to uh, give you guys an idea of what to expect. So let's go ahead and swap camera views and uh, I'll show you guys how to uh, take off the old brake and put a new one on. Okay, so now we've got the rifle set up on the bench. I know you guys can't see it. I've already checked for clear. Um, this is the old uh, APA Gen 2 muzzle brake right here that we are going to remove and install the Gen 3. You can see how much longer the Gen 3 is because of that extra port on there. 
but nonetheless I'm excited because that's going to keep the recoil down on an already lightly recoiling rifle with this muzzle brake and give me a little bit better performance. So um, I just use a one inch wrench. Um, APA recommends that you basically tighten these a little bit tighter than hand tight. Um, and that's all that they put on that. I probably go a little bit more than that, I guess just from uh, paranoia. But um, I'll show you guys. I broke this just the other day to clean this brake. So it shouldn't be too hard to break loose. So you see there, it's not too much tighter than hand tight. So we're just going to break that jam nut and we're going to screw it away from the crown of the barrel. Or I'm sorry, the shoulder. And we're just going to unscrew this muzzle brake off of here. Okay, a quick note guys, um, so APA recommends that you remove your muzzle brake and clean them every 500 rounds. So I'm, I'm in the camp as far as cleaning my rifles that um, I, I clean them once every three to 500 rounds depending on accuracy and that's it. So and then just kind of run a, a patch every once in a while and a boar snake through. So um, they say to clean these every 500 rounds and what they recommend is get you a hot cup of water. Um, put some lemon shine in it that uh, can be found in the dishwasher section of Walmart and it's the same thing that we use to clean our brass um, when we wet tumble and let it soak in there for about 10 or 15 minutes and then the carbon other than like the large build up spots the carbon will come off just as quickly I mean it'll just come off like uh, like slime almost and then any built up spots you can just take you like a little brass pick or something and just knock them loose now something to be aware of, once you knock that carbon off, everywhere that it was is going to rust instantly almost, especially because you have it wet. I don't know if you can see that. There is a little bit, probably not with the shadowing, but there is a little bit of rust on the inside of this since I haven't shot it since I cleaned it. So what I, don't freak out if it rusts. Just take you a little bit of your um, gun oil. I use Breakthrough. Um, and just kind of wipe the whole brake down, or clean the rust off with, a, with like brake cleaner and then wipe the whole brake down with a little bit of uh, gun oil. Like I said, I use Breakthrough, and it will return it back to its nice finish. Obviously, I wasn't worried about the baffles on the inside having a little rust on them because the first time I fire it, they're gonna get coated with carbon again. So, all right, so we're gonna take our new muzzle brake. I haven't done anything to it. It's just like you saw it coming out of the box. So we're gonna go ahead and screw it on, and we're gonna screw it all the way on until it bottoms out. Oh, one thing you wanna make sure of is that this jam nut is screwed all the way towards the muzzle brake. So we're gonna screw it all the way on. Okay, see that doesn't quite line up and that's how it's supposed to go. Then you back it off to where your ports are facing upwards. Okay, and then we're gonna take this nut and we're not gonna make it up fully tight. So when you time these things, it's not imperative that it's like 100% to the degree perfect. Um, what I have, I've got like a little, uh, a little hex wrench piece that I'll set through here and what I will do is I'll go back here to my level on my rifle and kind of just tweak tweak my rifle stock and make sure that it's pretty dang level which it looks pretty good right there and then I'll just visually and this is my method you know if you're a little a little OCD that's okay but I'll just do that, and I do have a level here, but, you know, I'll just kind of set it up next to it. See where I'm at. Looks like I go a little bit more. So, I usually just eyeball it. Okay, so, so now we have it as level as we can get it. So now we're going to take and move that jam nut as far as we can by hand. Okay, then we're going to take our wrench, and I just hold the, uh, the grip of the rifle. See, we had a little bit of turning on there, which this new design is supposed to keep that from happening, but it looks like it's still going to do it just a little bit. So we'll kind of move the brake just a little bit far, too far back. Okay, I'm going to put this on. Give it a good snug pull. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, we're gonna set that back in there and then eyeball the rifle from the back. Make sure my levels are centered and then check for that, check for level. That looks pretty dang good. 
So, I mean, keep in mind also that, I mean, you do have these tuning ports on top. So if you are just a hair off, it's not gonna hurt anything. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and dump out this package of stuff. I'm gonna set this wrench aside. If I didn't say it before, that's a one inch wrench as much as I need. You can use a crescent wrench, but I find that if you get the right tool for the job, it just works better. So we're not gonna put we're not going to put the Loctite on yet until we finish the tuning process. So we're going to put all but the last two plugs in. Okay. And it looks like they do give you plenty of spare plugs. Give me, let me put these in and I'll count them how many spare plugs they give us. I don't know if y'all can hear my dogs in the background there wrestling. Okay, so we're gonna put these plugs in here. And this is the point right now where we're gonna take the rifle to the range. And so we're gonna save our Loctite. We're gonna take the rifle to the range and we're going to start the tuning process on how we do this. So it looks like they give you four spare plugs in case these come out. But honestly, you know, you should be Loctiting them in place once you figure out what your ideal tune is. So at this point now, we're gonna go ahead and take the rifle, it's ready to go. We're gonna take the rifle out to the range and go ahead and fire it and start our tuning process. Well, surprise. Eh, I kind of failed you guys on uh, getting some range footage the other day. Um, the RO was there and he was doing some private lessons and just, I didn't feel like it'd be a good idea to be talking my head off to a camera while that was all happening. But I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of a rundown about kind of the process that I went through to get the muzzle brake tuned. Um, I mean, it would have been cool to have some range footage and to see some actual shots going through this thing, but it's not necessary for me to teach you guys, or at least inform you guys of what, you know, what process you need to go through to get this, uh, get this puppy tuned in for you. So let me swap to a different view real quick and I'll kind of try to give you guys an overview as best I can of how the process went and what to expect with this muzzle brake. All right guys, welcome to my makeshift shooting range. <laughs> this is gonna be kind of where I show you guys where my process started and where it finished up um, on tuning this muzzle brake. A couple things to note, the, the process, you really, I would say two rounds per position is enough for you to get an idea as to where the muzzle brake is going to be moving during the shot. Um, one, you can really do it in one, but it would always be, always be good to have two to confirm. So what I did, I just did it during a normal range session. I didn't, I ended up not doing a specific tuning session. I just did a normal range session and I watched what it did. And every so often I made a change. So the way that I started was I started with these back two ports open and all the rest of the ports closed. And I was hitting about, or I was watching it move to this area here. So um, that was kind of like my side end shots at my 100 yard target from changing the things up. So I went ahead and made the change and I left the back two ports open and then I opened this top left port to try to bring it down and to the right. Um, in doing that, I, I still saw it hit on the left, or still saw it move to the left, but it brought my, my uh, reticle down pretty much level with the, uh, with the bullseye here. Um, did a few shots there, and once I felt pretty good right there, then I made another change, and I had the back two ports open, and then I changed from the front port to this next one back. Okay, so this one should have given an increased, uh, more power basically in that direction. So what I noticed there is that I was pretty much like right here, just, just to the left of the bull whenever I would uh, post shot. So I was really close right there. Um, I did continue to tinker with it and kind of play with it. And I closed this, this port up and I went with these back two and then this one right here. And I noticed that I actually moved over here to, I was still staying level, but I had moved over here to the right side of the target. Still not far off easily 
easily good enough to spot my hit, my misses, but I wanted to kind of try to get it as close to bull as I could. So I noticed it being here, barely right, and so I changed it again, and I had the back two ports, this port, and the front right port to try to see if I could bring it back to the to the middle. And I found that it just pushed it right back here to the left. So, um, right about there. So I guess I was just figuring it was not going <laughs> to, I mean, I guess the, the degree of what I wanted was probably not going to be perfect with the way that I hold the rifle. So what I finished on is what you see here. And I actually backed it back off this port having these two ports and this port open pushed it to the right of the target having this port open instead kept it just barely to the left so i found that that gave for me the best situation so after i got this into this configuration i shot a little bit of positional a little bit of a tank trap and tried to see if my positioning on the tank trap lined up with what i was seeing prone and it did um, I was I was always kind of in this area after the uh, shot had broke so I can tell you without a doubt that the URP tuning system on these new Gen 3 muzzle brakes will absolutely get you closer to the bull after recoil no doubt about it in my mind I watched it move as as the day went on so that was pretty cool um, but Thank you for enjoying my little mini range today, and it didn't even cost me any money to show you guys what we had. So let's flip back to the to putting me back in frame, and we'll finish off this video. So guys, in conclusion, <clears throat> what can I say about this brick? Um, it's the best one I've used to date by far. Hands down, awesome. Um, if you have a Gen 2 and you're looking to upgrade to a Gen 3, <clears throat> I don't know that it's necessary. You will see some benefit on being able to tune where your recoil finishes uh, placing your reticle. But I don't know if it's the end all be all. Um, you know, $195 for a muzzle brake is kind of expensive. So I don't know if that's something that, you know, if you can afford it and you want to take it to the next level, I think it is a worthwhile upgrade that will benefit you in long range shooting no matter what you do, whether it's prone, hunting, match shooting, anything, it's going to help you. Um, so quality of part, I give it 10 out of 10. It's, it's a beautiful muzzle brake. Um, ability, I give it probably a 9 out of 10. The only reason I'll give it a 10 out of 10 is because I was really hoping to have a little bit more of a noticeable um, a noticeable feel having four ports instead of three ports on the brake and it's just it's it's a minute change it's not the one that I can feel I'm sure there's a test out there that was done that allowed them to feel the difference but I couldn't um, as far as value goes um, I give that about a 7 out of 10 um, it's it's expensive for uh, for a, a part but everything in this hobby is so I would say that if you can afford it, jump all over it. If you have something else that you like or you don't feel that it's a, it's a worthwhile upgrade for you, don't lose any sleep over not getting it. So, guys, those are my thoughts on the, uh, the APA Gen 3 Little Bastard Muzzle Brake. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope I was able to give you at least some part of this video. I hope was able to give you an insight into how it works, how to install it, any caveats you may be nervous about. Um, Stick, stay tuned for the next video, and hopefully that'll be in a week or so. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. That way you guys can check out more content as we go. Thanks.